Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the show. This is Sports with Strawberry Ice. I'm your host, Jeff Trenopol, and as always, I'm bringing you sports from a west side point of view right here in the great city of Cincinnati, Ohio, home of the Cincinnati Reds. All right, this show and every show is brought to you by T-Properties. T-Properties, quality housing for quality people. Check out their website at www.tpropertiesllc.com for all your rental property management needs and your rental needs. Okay, guys, if you found the show, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. I am up to 545 subscribers. That is awesome. Let's keep it rolling. Try to get to 600 as fast as we can. Okay. I see I'm wearing my red shirt today. Because I'm really missing baseball. It's almost June. And this is feeling like the 1994 strike. Where it's the middle of summer and we have no baseball. But they're still arguing about money. Okay. This is the latest that I've heard uh, about what they're <laughs> negotiating. This is from uh, ESPN's uh, Jeff Passon. He tweeted this out. Uh, today, players want a season of 100 plus games, full prorated salaries, and a look at the Pacific documents to better understand MLB's finances. And then you got this tweet from John Hurley, who tweets this out, which is the opposite end, you know, the players. Don't understand why the owners want them to take a salary cut. Well, this is what the the A's did. The A's are, the Oakland A's that is, are halting their $400 weekly stipend for their minor leaguers. Now, this is interesting. They remain A's employees, just unpaid employees. So this sucks even more for them because they can't seek to become free agents and... They can't file for unemployment. They just remain A's employees. And don't get paid and can't go anywhere. Now, the A's save about $1 million to $1.2 million on this. Okay. I have said before, I don't care for either side. They're both being idiots. The players have got to understand that the owners are losing money. They're losing a lot of money. I mean... The season was supposed to start at the end of March. It's almost June. We've had no baseball. They've had no money come in. They've had nothing. Now, I understand the players think that they, or or not think, they had an agreement for a prorated salary when this whole thing started back in March. I don't think anybody thought it was going to be, you know, three months. But be that as it may, the point is for me, if they don't figure this out soon, there's not going to be... They're not going to have to worry about playing baseball because nobody's, none of the fans are going to come back and none of them are going to care. Because you got the NHL who figured out how to come back, what they're going to do when they come back, where they're, and all you got to do is figure out where they're going to play and when. NBA, at least moving forward... I, I, I know I went off on them yesterday about the, the bubble and everything, but at least they're moving forward. They're, they're going to come back. They, the players have said that they want to come back and they want to finish the season. Which I understand. They should. All of them should come back and play. Um, now, well, the, the teams that really don't have a shot at the playoffs, I really understand. Like, Demi Lillard came out the other day, and the way it sounded that he was being a jerk. You know, like, well, if I ain't got a chance to, you know, make the playoffs, I'm, I'm not even going to do it. It's the way it sounded, you know, the way it was written or – the way he was quoted, however, he came out the other day and said, that's not exactly what I'm saying. He goes, I want to play. He goes, but it's really hard to play a meaningless game when you know you have absolutely no shot of making the playoffs. And he goes, and guys won't be in it as much and they could potentially injure themselves easier because if you're not mentally into the game, then yeah, things could happen. So, okay, when he clarified it, I could understand what he meant. He wants to play. He wants he wants to do the the playing tournament they're talking about, which is fine. Which is another one of these eight million plans the NBA has had. Just pick one and let's go. <laughs> I mean, it, it's like I've said yesterday and I've said past years, it's June. <laughs> you know, come on. We, we we gotta get going. Major baseball 
this, like I said, this is, this is getting to the point where it's, it's like a strike or a lockout. I mean, they can't figure out. It's not even, I know they keep saying it's health concerns. That's not the problem. The problem is the money. That's all, they, that's all they're squabbling about. They, I guarantee you, they can figure out the money that they both sides agree on. They'll start, the, you know, the next day. They'll get a date. You know, they'll figure out all the other, the health concerns. Their concern is the money. And like I said, for baseball fans like me, I don't care about the money. <laughs> it doesn't affect me either way. I just want baseball. I'm sure you guys feel the same way. And it's just, baseball just can't get out of their own way. They, they, they do this all the time. And Baseball Players Union, that is, it's, it's the greatest union in the history of unions, if you ask me. I mean, they've won every single time. But this time, they need to give in some, I think, a little bit. Because if they don't, I, I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be bad. Because you, you can't operate businesses without money coming in. No matter how much money you have, these other employees that don't make the million dollars and don't, you know, the ones that work for in the minor leagues and, and, and the concession, concession stands and all that stuff, they're not making any money. They really need this to come back so they can start making some money and our economy needs it. They're, they're, all this. They just need to come back. Okay. I got this story from Bengals Wire. Now this is very exciting for Bengals fans. Well, football fans in general. So Tuesday, provide a bit of good news. Now, like I said, it's from uh, Bengals Wire. Uh, a bit of good news via a report from Yahoo Sports, Charles Robinson, which states June's minicamps could get the go-ahead depending on certain factors. If coaches resume their, their in-house work next week, which means no more Zoom meetings, none of this other stuff, Bengals coaches everything, go down to Paul Brown Stadium, unlock the building, open the doors up, start doing your work next week. Because if you do all that, mini camps could resume, including with including players. Or not resume. They could be scheduled for as early as June 15th or as late as June 27th. This is great. Not all depending on the COVID-19 data, which I don't know. There's so much data about the COVID-19. I don't know which one's right and which one's wrong, if you want my opinion about it, but, you know. Okay, now, with the COVID-19 data and whether a handful of franchises get the go-ahead from their governments, which, sorry, the government should have no say-so in this, but anyway, that's a whole different story, <laughs> to resume their full operations. So, very good chance, as long as I think it was coaching staff and everything, they go unlock Paul Brown Stadium, they start working in their office, offices, June 15th, we could have minicamp, which is great. We could get Joe Burrow, T. Higgins, and all the rookies and all the new free agents and everybody on the field and start playing. At least start practicing, start gelling as, as a team. Again, what I like about what the NHL did and what the NFL is doing. They have a plan. Okay, if this happens, then we can do this. And then if this happens, then we can do this and this and this and this. That's how you open things up. Not going, well, we could do this. No, well, let's do this. Well, what if this happens? Well, oh my God, what if that happens? Yeah, but that happens. It, just make a decision step by step by step. Make a plan moving forward. That's all you need to worry about. You don't need to worry about the future. You cannot predict it. Nobody can. Okay? So, stop worrying about, you know, what's going to happen. I, I mean, there are guys, like, uh, uh, that, that, that have their wives, for major base, they have their wives that are pregnant. And I understand. And I am not trying to sound cold or cold-hearted or mean or anything. They're saying they might not play because they don't want to bring this home to the family. Okay. Getting back to what Damon Lillard said. He goes, yeah, we're going to do this in a bubble. He goes, but we could get it in our everyday lives. Which he's right. <laughs> Just because you go back to play Major League Baseball or 
professional basketball or hockey or football doesn't does not increase your risk of getting it that much more than it does in your everyday life. I mean, it's a virus. It could be anywhere, <laughs> literally anywhere. So you could clean, sanitize anything, and then you get done playing and you go eat at this restaurant or or you go walk in a park and sit on a bench that's not that clean and you get it. I mean, it's literally <laughs> that's what can happen. So all this. Planning and what do we do if this happens? What you can't plan, you get sick, go to the doctor. So I like this why I am a I'm a big NHL fan anyway. I, I love my blue jackets. I cannot wait for them to get started. Plus, which is cool, they're gonna be in the playoffs when they start, which is great. And so I can whole other subject I talk about them when hockey starts. So it, it, I know I keep saying the same thing, but it's just like yeah. we got too many people over overthinking and overthinking and overthinking. Make a plan, move forward. That's all you can do. That's what the NHL is doing. That's what the NFL is doing. Major Baseball, like I said, theirs has nothing to do, I don't care what they say, has nothing to do with the COVID-19. It's money. It's completely, totally money. You know? The players don't want to give any up. Owners are losing money like crazy. So they got to come somewhere in the middle. You know? Somehow. You guys got to figure it out. All right. I got some Facebook groups that uh, I like to mention on here. The ones that uh, I help run. You guys can come join them. I got Bengals Nation, Bearcats Country, Reds Country, and Cyclones Country. If you are if you are listening to me on the podcast and it's an Apple podcast, do me a favor. Give me a five-star review. All the podcasts, just make sure you like and subscribe. Speaking of subscribing, I said at the beginning of the show, YouTube, you guys have been unbelievable. I've gotten <laughs> so many comments. I'm up to 545 subscribers. I had one guy, just I just read his comment. I don't remember which show he commented on because they all post up. And it shows me, but I, I, I don't remember which one it was. But it was me talking about Joe Burrow, which, I mean, if you watch my show, I talk about Joe freaking Burrow a lot. And I think he's going to be a really good quarterback. And this guy said, you guys are, you Bengals fans are getting so excited about Joe Burrow. He's a system quarterback. At Ohio State, he couldn't even beat Haskins out or JT Barrett. True, um, but did he really was he really given an opportunity? I mean, Haskins he broke, broke his hand. That's the reason that Haskins won. Not necessarily that Haskins beat Burrow. Burrow couldn't play. Broke his hand. Um, yeah, he's assistant quarterback. Okay, the system that he broke all the records in, they just brought that in this year. So it's not like a new or a old system that they just plug and play a quarterback in. They brought an entire new system in, and he learned it really fast, and killed everybody. So, and he goes, he said, oh yeah, he goes, yeah, he's going to be a bust, you know, next year I'll, I'll message you again. I said, okay, I look forward to hearing from you. Because <laughs> I don't think you're going to write me back about this. Because I think you're wrong. Anyway, I could be wrong. Who knows? Just my opinion. That's all this is, an opinionary sports talk show. <laughs> Other than that, that's just sports, baby. Tell all your friends about me. See you guys.